welcome, welcome. We'll give it just a minute to catch up. We decided to go live. We are at Ralph's Industrial with the one and only Jack. Hey, Jack. How are you doing? Hi, <laughs> everybody. Who knows everything about everything related to the sewing machines. It's kind of amazing. So uh, we are going to do a couple things. We are going to kind of do a walkthrough of the new machine that I'm getting, the cylinder arm. Um, kind of talk about that for a minute. Then Jack is going to be so kind as to answer all of your questions that you submitted. There was a lot of them. There's a lot. I don't know how many we'll get through. Um, and I know when people hop on here, they'll have some questions too. So we'll try and get through those. Susan is behind the camera. Hey. And um, there's also Ruben who will come and answer any questions for us if Jack doesn't know the answer. Right. So we have all the bases covered, guys. All of them. <laughs> Are people hopping on? Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. We've got 50, 54 people so far. Okay. All right. Okay. We ready for I'm this? I'm ready. I guess let's do it. Dun, All right. Dun, so we just need to speak loud because we don't have mics. Okay. Um, and here we go. I was just showing them your new machine. Yeah. All right, Jack. Let's talk about my new machine. This is your beautiful new 1341. Yes. King Max cylinder walking foot machine. Uh huh. So this is a needle feed walking foot. That means the needle walks, the feed walk and the feed dogs a lot. Three things called compound feeding or unison feeding. That's mm -hmm. what Juki uses the term. It's a very high lift machine. So if you lean into the knee lift here, you go up 16 oh, yeah. millimeters. You're going to go just all under that, three quarters. All that inch. good top stitching, yeah. look at that. Ooh. You got plenty of clearance for that. Someone yeah. had that question about what the that. triple feed means. Can oh. you, can, so that was one of the questions. Okay, that was one of the questions. Okay. The, the triple feed. Triple feed means. That's different than my normal machine, correct? correct? The machine that you have uh -huh. and that you have uh -huh. are called top and bottom feed or drop feed walking foot. Drop feed meaning the needle goes straight up and down. Okay. In your case, the feet and the feed dogs do the walking. So right. it's top and bottom feed on that. This is even a heavier feed because it's top and bottom and needle. And needle. Three things called unison feed. Okay. So they all walk. All walk. They all walk way. together. So if you want to take a look here, watch this. And you see how the feet are walking. The needle is yeah. walking. And underneath the feed dogs are walking. They're oh, all synchronized together. Do you see together. that? That's oh, why yeah. you can put a heavy piece of vinyl, leather, whatever you want. It's going to pull you in. Let me get it from the side in. so they can see. Do you want to turn it? Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. You want to go over here can... or the other side? What would you do? I'm just going to get it from a side angle. Okay. I'm just, the camera's being silly. There we silly go. Silly camera. Silly, see silly that? camera. That is called unison feeding or three things feeding. Yeah. So on my it's... machine, the needle doesn't move like that. It Correct. just goes. And so can, is this the same as a compound walking, someone's asking? If you're, if you're dealing with the ter singer's terminology, they called it compound feed with alternating presser feed. Okay. It's the same thing. Juki okay. calls it unison feed. So it doesn't take as much writing. <laughs> <laughs> Simplified like it. it. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. I'll okay. show you if you want to see on the other one what the difference is. Yeah. Should we see? Yeah, see all right. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. This is your machine. Yep. My machine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come over yeah, here. Yeah, on the other side. Yep. And this is called a top and bottom feed, which is a walking foot, mm. or a drop feed walking foot. And the way this baby works, I'm just going to release the clutch here. You see the needle is going straight up and down. The feet are walking, and the feed dogs underneath are walking. Mm -hmm. It's a good walking foot machine. We use a lot of this type of feeding action when you're getting a stuff that has to be very tight. Like, let's say you're doing the stitching on a cowboy boot all that fancy stitching uh -huh. because the needle doesn't care it's going straight up and down so you're going back and forth real tight little stitches okay yeah we're on this one you can do it but the needle still says do whatever you want I'm still pulling right forward. i'm still pulling forward right mm -hmm. okay, okay. So that, that makes sense why and i can see how it's different too because this mm -hmm. yeah this needle can only go and that's with the foot and it's walking with the foot all together unison right. feet mm -hmm. okay all right let's talk and more this, about this type of feet are called dbu style feet and these are called these are singer style feet this is one of the style feet mm -hmm. okay yeah. okay let's talk a little bit more about my new machine all right your machine is a top load large bobbin so your bobbin is here now and it's an m style bobbin which should be in the drawer which is the same as correct. my other machine so i can use the same correct the so you've same got a large bob. bobbin machine, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it okay. goes right in there. The nice thing about this is when you go top load and you go heavy, you're driving the needle by the bobbin case now. So if you should get something jammed up, you didn't smack the bobbin in the like bobbin that. case, and you said, "Oh man, I broke the hook." Right. You don't have you don't have that here. What you would happen is, okay, you would 
break a needle maybe, knock uh -huh. it out of timing. Okay. And so you'll push a button and get it back into timing, put, put it back in. And push a button, is there a button? There is I a should button about? should be right <laughs> under here. What button is this? <laughs> okay, I, I under you. the plate, okay, yeah. all right. There's a button and when it, when under it happens. Under my flatbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all you do is you push the button, you'll uh -huh. see it, I'll show you in a minute. Okay. When you turn the hand wheel in reverse, you take the thread, uh -huh. turn the hand wheel in reverse, two full turns and you'll hear a click. Oh. What it did was it slipped the shaft back into place. Uh -huh. So now you're right there in time. Oh. Okay. Then you can go thread it up again, put a new needle in, off and running. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. How you like that? I like that. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good, good knowledge right there. Okay. Someone wants to know if there is a Juki equivalent to this one. Yes. It's called the... 1341. Oh, uh -huh. hey. Same number. Same except, exact number, except you the know, price then goes... Because it's uh, got the name Juki. Because Juki. Because you have the Juki right. name. Now, I'll tell you the story with the Juki America is not bringing them in anymore as a 1341. They only want to bring in the 2341 and 2342s, which are all automated and set and the other. I can still get them because there's somebody who's bringing them in direct. And uh -huh. I can get for anybody that wants it and there's a Juki, I can still get it. Mm -hmm. So it's no problem. And you can ship anywhere. Anywhere you want. Yep. And we've shipped all over the Pacific. Shipped to St. George. We sort of, we've done that. <laughs> yes, you did. We shipped to Hawaii. That, that was a few other questions. Yeah, yeah. do you ship? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We, okay. We do a program with RimCat, which is Rocky Mountain College. I'm going to go closer because they say they can't hear you really okay. well. We go to a, we have a program we set up with RimCat, which is Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, and we set up cohorts for them. And we ship all over the United States. Um, okay. So when they have 23 in a cohort, write them up, get the freight, get the, and it goes everywhere in the world. You know, wherever oh, they tell cool. us to ship. And we've had that where we've gone off to Saipan and to ship to these places. It's expensive, but we, but you can do want, it. we do it, you yeah. know, or Guam or whatever. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we do it. Okay. Um, let's do a little bit more about this machine. Okay. This machine, which is nice. It has the stitch length adjustment right here. Uh-huh. It's not like the old ones where you had to push a button and turn the hand wheel and all this stuff. Uh, I don't even know no, the old no, ones. You would, okay. <laughs> so this is nice. This is really uh -huh. nice. Uh-huh. Um, this plate, this machine, as you have right here, has that uh, plate on there. And that uh -huh. plate should convert this from a drop feed, from a cylinder to a drop feed. So it's one machine, you don't have to have two. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So you just take that plate off and you're ready to roll. Yep, and then I have the cylinder arm under there for yep. the tight spots. Mm -hmm. I'll show you on another machine here so you can yep. see what it looks like that. Okay. One. The nice thing about it is this is called a belly cut, mm -hmm. which we do, and it's opened up. So let's say you have to do something that's long, mm -hmm. and you don't want to fight it up on top there. Yep. It'll go all the way to the floor. You can sit there and work with it. You know? Or a big bag. You can just That's slip it. right over. And go right around. So I got a bigger, I got a bigger belly cut mm -hmm. than the normal table just because I knew for me and for what I do, I'm going to want a more open space under here. So that is customizable depending yes, on what correct. you want. And what we did... Because of Kasaya, we thought maybe that's the best way to go. So I drew it up and designed it and sent it off to the table manufacturers, and yeah. they made it. And I'm sure the next thing I know, they'll be selling it to everybody. But, <laughs> Let me show them the difference. Say you want a Kasaya table. Let me show them the difference. Okay, so, here's, so this is a look, look how it's. I mean, like, look how big my arm is in there. It goes all the way to my elbow, fingers to elbow. That's how. That's how wide open it is. Okay, so let's go look at the other one. And it's too. deeper, and it's deeper back here. Because this is only five inches, and the other one was 12. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I still have, you know, I still have a little workspace on the side, which is great. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you what the normal table looks like. What a normal one would look like is like this. It's a smaller cutaway. This, normal. This is what we ordered yeah. when it came from China. This way. Okay. Yeah, so and then see decided. how much smaller that is? Yeah. It's half half the width mm -hmm. and half the depth. Yeah. I was like, that's not big enough. <laughs> go big or go home. Okay, there's a few questions. I'm going to forget them if we don't okay. ask them. Okay. Um, yeah. I, maybe I don't remember how they said it, but they asked about the Texo and uh -huh. the Reliable something. I don't know those brands, but okay. probably if they tell me what it is, we can look them up and find out if it's okay. very similar. And then someone else is asking, how much is the cylinder machine? Those are like, I think it's twenty six ninety five. Is it? I think it's twenty six ninety five plus there was additions because we had mm -hmm. it, was, it was more expensive for this. Yeah, I got extras on it. And she has he, he's talking about. Item. Sorry, my camera wasn't there. It's more expensive for this. For this plate. And for their add-ons. This is like $150. Mm -hmm. And this is like $150. And I'll I show you this in a minute. I didn't get this. This is... Um, this is called a swing guide. 
Yeah. And you can set the depth on it. His health, if you want to use an edge guide up to your machine, oh. and you can set it wherever you want. So you see, and then you lock it in place. And once you do that, you can set that so you can say, I always want to be an inch from here, mm -hmm. an eighth of an inch, whatever it is. And it's a roller. So that way, if you're doing, let's say, leather, you're not hung up on it. It'll stay and keep moving right along with uh -huh. it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or something thick. Yeah, I just didn't. And it's a swing up, so it's made to get out of the way. I didn't think I would absolutely need that, which with what I am doing, um, he is located in downtown Den. Well, not downtown Denver. Yeah, What's downtown Denver. I mean uh, by Invesco team. Field, right. um, off of Clay. Is it this Clay Street? Correct. Um, and that. What was the other question? What would be good for leather? Yeah. This, this right here. This machine. Right this there. machine right here is great for leather. Mm -hmm. So now I could probably do more leather if I wanted to, but. I Probably need a Skype or two. <laughs> I can sell you that. I know. I know. <laughs> wah, wah. Another machine. Does this compare machine. to Thor? Uh, yes. Probably. Yes. I, I there, it's pretty much the same, the uh, same, same as thing. Thor. You know? It's the yeah. same thing, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like we know this company makes the machines. Yeah. So they're probably making them for Thor and for all those other brands you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And they're saying what name you want on mm -hmm. them. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Because we know this company. It's got like seven factories in China. And what they do is they make, even though Juki would never admit it, <laughs> but it's funny how all the parts are Juki parts. Uh -huh. right? so, uh -huh. And we also know that they make machines that are for Adler, the German company. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for Foth, the German company. Uh huh. So it's like, hmm, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all the same it's all. inner workings. Mm -hmm. Just so different. somebody is buying something and saying, I want the name whatever on it. Yeah. You know, Raphael and Thor and uh -huh. Artisan and whatever. Okay. Um, so the model of this one is the... This is a 15... This is the same. This is the GC this is 1341, 1341, which is just like your This game. is my same one. We were right. just showing the difference in the table, in the, in the table mm -hmm. for so, that one. So would your accessories be uh, um, compatible with the Juki yeah, uh, of the same model? 100%. Yeah. They're the same parts, right? Same, same parts. Yep, same parts. Mm -hmm. Same parts, guys. And yes, this plate is removable. Someone's asking. Yes. No, it's made to be that way. You can take it off here. I think there's a plate right here. Yeah. You unscrew it right here. And you take it off, and that way it'll come out looking like this. And once you get that, then you can say it'll sew around here. There you just go. Like this. Boom. And that's the same machine. I'm not so going to fight with all that so, top stitching yeah, anymore. So then you can see it just like this. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to run it to the floor, run it to the floor. Yay. <laughs> and he says, ta da. Ta da. Oh, there's the reset this button. This is the button. What you do is, let's say you broke a needle and you knocked it out of time. Oh, man, I got to call Ralph uh -huh. and come out and reset it. Uh -huh. If it's really banged up, you might have to. But okay. Most likely you start I don't here. imagine I'll ever do something so that... Take the thread out. Uh-huh. Take this and put your finger out hold it down. Uh -huh. And turn this hand wheel in reverse. Two full turns. Uh -huh. Probably the only time you ever turn it in reverse. Yeah. And you'll hear a click. Okay. And that's a safety clutch. And what it does, it turns on that little gear, snaps uh -huh. the shaft right back into place. Put a new needle in, thread it up. Take a trip okay. and see if it works, and you're going back yes. in business. Yes, <laughs> back in business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we need to show anything else about my new machine? The only thing that we didn't talk was adjustable walk. We kind of talked about that. Uh huh. I think before, and I can show it again if you want. Yeah, maybe let's show that one okay. more time. Over on yours. Uh, over on my machine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. You know what I was thinking, Susan? Why don't I get your phone out real quick and pull up the video so I can see comments too? Yep, as good we're idea. Going. Good idea. This is called an adjustable walk. This is a great invention. Now, what this is, by turning this knob here, it moves the foot. Why don't you come in here close and listen? See how this walks up high and then walks down low? Oh, yeah. So Sorry, do it again. I need yeah, to get the camera out. I'll watch it. Oh, here you go. Put the clean mark in. <laughs> That's why I get after moving, after it's moving, yeah, you just look nice. That's for doing moving yeah. home plate. Oh, that? I see it. Yeah. What it is when you walk, and he's moving through, that knob this right knob there. This knob right here. I'm just turning it. So what it is? Every machine really has it, but they don't have it as a knob. They have a plate in the back here that you unscrew, and yours has them too. And you go in there, and there's a little like protractor thing. You undo it, and you slide it up, and it makes the feet up or down. And usually, what happens is you find the sweet spot and you leave it for life. Okay? Yeah. But what this makes it is, let's say you have something like you've got to go over a handle of a bag that you're doing. And walking feet don't climb. Because you know stuff's sitting there and go, uh -huh. and you don't want to come off. Yeah. Either. 
you can walk that, turn that off. Turn that, yeah. So someone asked, so what? We, so we're talking about this? This, this, this knob, right knob. here. It moves. This go up and see, down. Watch this little. See that foot? Now I'm gonna turn it the other way. You see how that upper foot is going? It I'll turns, show you what it, it looks makes like when both I go up and down. Now watch what happens. I'll sew on it. Okay. And you see this. And you see how I have it? I turned it like max one way. You see how it's walking really high there? Now I'm gonna turn it like this. So let's say you're doing some fine leather and you don't wanna make any marks. You want it just to. Well, I made it too well. Okay. Huh. See? I gotta get the tension right there. Uh-huh. But yeah, it'll make it so it'll just barely go t -t 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 -t, like it's padding as it's feeding, right? So you don't have those teeth marks mm -hmm. in your vinyl. Someone said it's leather. a built-in hump jumper. Yeah, it kind is a built-in hump yeah. jumper. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Somebody says, Oh, I see it now. Um I see it is. would you recommend having a walking foot machine if you already have the cylinder arm, or is that too much? Um, Robert, you already have a cylinder arm. Is it a walking foot or is it a needle feed? Is it a walking foot or I'm guessing it's a needle feed. So you're asking if he, he's, he's another bag maker, mm -hmm. all bag makers on here. So he's asking if he should have both for, well, what I'm getting both. I guess my, my, <laughs> my question is if you have a cylinder machine already, if it is a needle feed, what is the model number? Yeah. Cause it might be a walking foot that they converted to a needle feed and you can convert it in a minute. Ah. If you got a needle feed, like, oh, let's say a lot of times we'll run into a situation on a machine, like uh, console had a, a 255 and somebody says they want a, a 254, which is a needle feed. Well, they don't bring them in anymore. Uh -huh. So what you do is you turn the needle bar uh, 180 degrees and you uh -huh. put a Singer needle feed foot in there and all of a sudden it won't walk anymore. It just works as a needle feed. Interesting. So it's the same machine. He's a uh -huh. Juki 1341. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, 1341? That's, well, 1341, that's, that's this. That's this one, yeah, that's, that's what he has. Foot. Okay. That's is, what he has. Is it, is it a walking foot right now? No, I think it's a... Needle feed? It's a needle feed, so he's asking if You he, can convert that in a minute. Oh, you just have to turn... You change the needle bar, you turn it, you change the foot, and all of a sudden, guess what? Because you should have two shafts back there, one to hold the foot that goes over the shaft and one that goes up the slot. One you're not using right now. What you'll do is you put that on there, you'll have them both working, and you have a walking foot. Huh. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada boom. You got it. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else? You actually do have. A I do there. have. How do you like that? That well, hey, thanks. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I didn't actually ask for that, but I'll take it. Okay, that <laughs> I good. may use it. I think you I will. I may use it. I think you will. I and love how a, I love a, how high. Yes. The foot lifts. This is the key. I mean, One, look how, so, look, look at that it's clearance, guys. Three quarters guys. of an inch under there. Three quarters of an inch. So you think you're going to sew that something? That seems like there? more. It does. That's, it that's may a be, lot. Yeah. And maybe because also we adjusted this too. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You know, because that'll bring it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? It's gorgeous. And I'm super excited. I have no idea where I'm going to put it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't we'll find a spot. place. I have an idea. We'll find a place. Okay, so I'm going to start. I have questions. We did a little uh, Google spreadsheet questionnaire on my Facebook group of questions to ask Jack. Let me just answer a couple questions coming through. So the person who's asking about the machine that's for leather, that's the one that he quoted, the 2650. That's this one. That's this one. That they that is good for leather. 2695. So 2695. 26 that's, that's it without that special table and without the... Right. The special editions that I And got. then they're talking about holding the thread super tight when you start. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, that's a critical thing. On any walking foot of any type, okay, what you do... I'm okay so far. Okay, thank you. Uh, on any any walking foot, the first thing you do is hold the thread. Uh huh. And you can do it very simply. I was going to yeah. say it doesn't have fabric under it. Right? I forget to do that yeah. sometimes on mine, and it always sucks it down, and I get that, this big old ball well, on the bottom. I'm happens. like, shoot. Let me see. I'll get this up here. Yeah. Do this it happens. You. Let's see here. All right. So let's say you're going to start sewing. You put your fabric under there. I'm going to do something. Go ahead. I'm going to come like this. Okay. <laughs> and I put my fabric under there, and I put my thumb on it right here. Is that going to be okay? But it just wouldn't turn, but not well. Would it be okay. easier to hold it? There we go. Okay. Are nope. you good? No, nope, I'm, I'm going to put my thumb right here, and I slip my fabric under it like this. Let's say that this is not. In fact, hang on. There you go. We'll do it right. There okay. You go. 
So now we're gonna start off the way we should. Of course, it's set up as a cylinder, which makes it harder yeah. to work with. Go from here. Get laid <laughs> Get both threads in my hand. Um, Mindy, we did show the difference in my uh, 0302 and this one. We've showed the difference at the very beginning of the video, so you can go back and watch that. So what you want to do is you have the two threads. Put your finger on them right here. You know my fingers right there? Yeah. Two threads. And uh -huh. all you have to do, whenever you start, is pull them and get one or two stitches in there. Uh-huh. And once you do that, start sewing. You're good to go. Yeah, then take off. Yeah. And you will never have that because there's a lot of tension on that bobbin. So what happens is the thing comes around, if, it, if you don't hold it tight, it slips down Just below. Goes down below. Yeah. And this one's gonna be a pain in the neck when it does it. Your other one's a side load. This one's a top load. It's gonna go way down. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah, that one's like, ah, yeah. I forgot to hold my thread. Right. It's not a yeah. huge deal, but yeah, for this one, it's really important right. to remember mm -hmm. that, right? Yes. Okay. Do, do they need to use a different needle when using vinyl? No, no. It, you can use the same needle used for leather or for vinyl, okay? Leather is usually cut what they call a cutting point. So it's it's got a uh, either a triangle or a diamond shape or something. Because mm -hmm. you want to cut and you want to expand the, um, sorry. Take me out to the prize. <laughs> He's got, take me out to the ball game. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my, I coach baseball and I've done it for 30 some years. Is that what do I do? <laughs> 35 I love it. years. I love it. <laughs> so, that's why I'm leaving from here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but. Um, I was telling you about what the, uh, the needles, the needles are going to be, if you're going to go leather, usually go like this machine takes the 135X 17. Okay. If you go to leather, you go to leather point is a 135X 16. The only difference is it's not a sharp point. Okay. It's got like either a diamond point, a triangle point, what they call a wedge point where it kind of goes twist to the right or twist to the left a little bit. And that's usually what you go with because the idea is as it goes through, it expands the leather or the vinyl allows the thread to come in and come back up without being trapped. Where a sharp point, what it wants to do is it comes through and then it closes, grabs the thread and you go, why am I skipping? Why am I skipping? It's because the thread can't pull all the way up. Pull all the way up. It's being stuck. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, somebody asked, sorry. Somebody yeah, there's a, a few. What feet choices do you have for the King Mag 0320? Quite a few. Yeah. The, uh, it has pretty much all the different, <laughs> every kind of foot you could correct. want, right? You can get right yeah. walk zipper and left walk zipper, edge guide feet. Mm -hmm. um, they do make a skinny foot yeah. here for it. Right. Um, I tried it on my machine. It's awesome. It's just a little sharp. I need to like, yeah, we'll... I need to smooth mine down a little bit because yeah. uh, it's too sharp on my material. But um it's a fabulous option for bag makers. When you get feet, you gotta realize feet are like files. They're made, they're case hardened. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is what you wanna do is kind of take the sharp teeth off it a little bit. Yeah. You wanna give about 20 years worth of wear on in one second, like grind it. Okay, uh -huh. now it's ready to go. Uh -huh. So it doesn't bite, because they're right. sharp. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're sharp, yep. Mm -hmm. So to clarify, people are asking, this one here is the cylinder arm and the model is? 1341. 41. This is just has the table on it right now. It is a cylinder arm, okay? And it is equivalent to the Thor that some people have. And or the, the Juki. Juki that some people have. It's just a Same. different name. And this is the industrial machine that's not a cylinder arm. And that's this is a, mine at home. Flatbed drop feet. That's a zero three two zero, zero, which is equal to the Juki 1181N. Pretty much the same exact model, different name. Right. And different price point. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> Juki, you're paying for the Juki name. Correct. They're the King Max the is, a, is like a step down in name. Because it's... It, King Max is really a manufacturer of yeah. equipment. And Juki is kind of like General Motors. General Motors makes a lot of cars, mm -hmm. but do they really make them? No. Fisher makes bodies, and this one makes that, and this one makes that, and they put them all together and have a car. That's mm -hmm. what Juki does. Yeah. But these guys actually make the machines for everybody. And how much does your 0302 usually run? What's like the 12, base price of that? 12 95 $12.95. And then you can get add-ons for that yeah. as well. Uh, you know, little upgrades and stuff. And the thickest in. thread that you would suggest using in the cylinder arm I here? I would say 138. Wow. I've wow. seen people go to 207, but be careful. Wow. And if you do that in your bobbin, go to like 92, okay? Because you're pulling a lot of weight up on that. Mm -hmm. thing, you know? Okay. 
Okay, yeah. that's so, awesome. Yeah, for 138, and you'll see, you run some 138, you'll see that's some, especially for top stitching. That's yeah. Some big heavy I, I only go up to 70 usually. <laughs> okay. so maybe 80. Okay, and that's no problem. I'm like, I haven't gone all the way well, up to Well, a tech that. 70 is 69, and that's what's in here right yep. now. And that's, uh -huh. that's the thing. most that's common thread in. of all. So it that's is. upholstery, hot air balloons, uh -huh. tents and awnings, yeah. canvas, all that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, we're going to, I see all you guys talking. I'm going to get through a couple of these questions, though, that people have asked because um, we posted on there that we would. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there's going to be a couple questions on the 0320. Let's okay. go to that first. Okay. Um, the first question is, what are the exact spots on this machine that manually need to be oiled, oh. and how often should you oil them? Well, the rule of thumb in manufacturing is every eight hours of production. Right. So that you're sitting in the factory eight hours and you're Same going. with your needle, right? Right. Every eight hours. That's the rule uh -huh. of thumb in a factory. Okay. Now, I know people are not sitting there eight hours a day. Right. So if you see it starts getting funny, change the needle. Uh -huh. That's the first That's thing you'll find. My God, it saves everything. Uh -huh. If it sounds funny, one drop of oil on these little cups here, and you heard stuff going... Also, it goes, yeah. oh, it seems so smooth now. Uh-huh. Okay. So can you close, yes. get close on the machine and let's mm -hmm. show the oil spots. Basically, there are these little cups. Can you see this right here? I'll, I'll do this so my finger's not in the way. See right here, there's this spot. Uh -huh. And then yep. you come over here. There's this spot mm -hmm. and this spot. Mm -hmm. And then over here, there's a little spot here. And then you come down here and there's should be on each side here. One yep. here and one there. And that's yeah, basically all the spots I oil. That's all you do. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm doing the, it right. There's, they're contact <laughs> spots, and you'll hear them because when uh -huh. you, that if they don't, and you know, they're funny, also they stop squeaking. Mm -hmm. And of course, then your oil pan is down here that you make sure your oil is always in it. <clears throat> so you lean it back and you say, okay, where's my high and my low? You know, it's you right here. Right. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it. It's right. It's hard to see on the on. Um, we'll video, use, but we'll there is. Oh, there we go. High and low. So you make sure when you start sewing in the morning, you. You uh, take it up there that it's always somewhere between high between, and low because right. there's a pump right here and it has to drive it through there. If it goes below that, the pump can't sit in the reservoir and it's not drawing up anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it'll self oil itself. And another little trick you might do, you start doing it, use it for a while, is just hold the thread and give it the gas and, and let it pump the oil up through the system. Oh, okay. So that way it's nice and smooth. It's not like sitting in a car that's been sitting for three months and right. you crank it up, you know? You okay. Know, that way it's not metal on metal. Awesome. Um, somebody else asked how often, and I, th I think I know the answer to this, how, how often do they need to bring their machine in to be looked over and serviced? I think the only answer is only if something's really wrong, wrong with it. That's, that's the it. nice thing about these all metal heavy industrial duty machines. industrial machines. They yeah. don't need maintenance like regular it's not your plastic domestic machine. sewing machines it's, correct. it's totally different right i haven't i haven't had to have mine serviced once and i've had it for over four years um i mean i had like tension you know things that i had to get used to at the beginning and knowledge about it that i had to learn but i didn't have any issues on it at all no. still four plus years later so the idea is never that's right <laughs> It's it's only if you have a problem. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. If you have a problem, uh -huh. and, and you can, we can you can talk. Actually, you can get on the phone and talk to Ruben. Or right. To they are guys. they have great customer service yeah. here. If you need to talk to Ruben, he knows. And sometimes he helps you on everything. the phone. You go oh, and it's solved. Sometimes if you just can't do it, there's two things. You can either do a service call and come out and see if you're local mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. or B, uh, you come in and see him, yep. bring it in, and he, they fix it for you, whatever you want. Um, the one issue that I have noticed mm -hmm. with uh, my machine and with Susan's is that our screws were super tight. Oh. On, so if you get a machine, say, hey, Ruben, can you loosen yes. all of the screws first, yes. please? Because... Susan, we still can't get her foot one loosened. They, uh, you know, they, they come out of a factory. <laughs> yeah. And the factory, I think they put them on uh, an assembly line with like a machine, you know, probably. Crazy... Well, like a nut runner. You know, yeah. like you'd have right. a garage. Woo, woo, woo. You know, uh -huh. good luck getting them off the first time. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, does King Max 1341 have an oil pan, or is it just manually oiled? It's manually oiled. Okay. Usually, there's when, no oil pan. Mm -mm. When you have a drop okay. feed walking foot, what it is. Um, can or you show me the oil spots on it? I think it's just all the red dots, That's right? That's all it is. That's all it is. Okay. It's right here, so it's right got here. little red painted mm -hmm. dots mm -hmm. all along it, and those are all of our oil spots? Right. That's basically it. Oh, that's And what nice. that does is it just takes it so the oil is coating. Because on a needle, and you put it in this little 
thing right here. There's wick system right here. Oh, so you put oil in there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How and much do you put in there? Just a few drops just to get okay. it. Okay. Because okay. what it does, it gets socked, soaked, and then what it does is it'll wick to certain places inside of the hair. Oh, okay. And that's all you have to do because these are these are drop feed or needle feed blocking feed. So their RPMs at max would be about 2,000 stitches a minute, which is not like your 8,700 or whatever that's going at 5,000, you know? Okay. So they're not going to ever be at that high speed. Uh -huh. So they just need a little oil to make sure they're always where they're supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> That's great. There was a lesson, a uh, question by JNT Leather a couple times, but I didn't quite understand it. Any special needles? Well, needles would be the same as any, basically the same as this machine. Yeah, you use the same needles. And 135 by 17 is your regular needle, and 135 by 16 is your leather point needles. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your system. Um, let's see, next question. Are people able to test run? try out machines yes. uh, when they come here to see what the best fit is for them. Yes, yes. I did that when I came to shop for mine. Mm -hmm. um, are machines in stock so I can load it up and take it home? Yes, but, but I want to make sure yeah. before you, you come need in, to call you first. call and you call talk first. to me and you know, that way I can say, I don't know, if, you know, maybe we sold the three that were ready to go yep. and we have three in the box. I don't want you driving in from Kansas or Missouri and we go, Oh, sorry. We don't have one. Yeah, you, you need to call ahead and like, give I them a I make sure it's up. there. I got your name. I'm saying, Mary Lou's coming in. She's going to try this machine on Tuesday at this time. It doesn't right? mean you have to purchase it, no. but he will have it. I'm going to make sure it's there for yeah, you. Yeah, make sure that it's available if you're coming all the way from another state. Right. Or even if you're coming from uh, Vail. Yeah. Have people come right. Let me know. I don't want you to drive right. all the way in and say, oh, man. You know? Right. Or like, I know we have a shipment of 10 more of these coming in. We're down mm -hmm. to one. All of a mm -hmm. sudden. So it's like. Okay. You know? Um, next one, how is customer service and warranty handled for out of state purchases? I mean, that could let's just say for any purchases. Yeah, how is the same. warranty service all of that? Well warranty is, is ninety days on the head, one year on the motor, one your internal parts in the head. Okay. It's not under warranty at all. Is anything coming in contact with the needle? The throat plate, the feed dog, the foot, the bobbin, the bobbin case, the needle bar, the things I can break in the shoreham while I'm showing it, those are not under warranty. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but how do we handle it? Um, basically, get on the phone uh -huh. and say, I'm in Kansas and I got a problem. Yeah. Okay. We can do video stuff to you yeah. and work with you until we can get it fixed. B, we can say, ship it in here. We'll fix it for you. you right. Know? And we'll take care of it or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, we don't send them a Will you help them figure out how to ship it? We can try if you want. I can have. Ways. I'm just thinking shipping a big machine like that. It's no. What be... basically what you're going to need to do if you have a problem, it's not going to be the motor and the table. No. It's we'll tell you how to lean this back, head. take the head, and okay. you put it in a box, and yeah. we'll tell you get some styrofoam around it, right? And ship it in here, UPS or okay. whatever. We get it, we fix it, we talk to you on the phone about it, we ship it back to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Can you put a speed reducer? on on a direct drive machine? No. Okay. That perfect. was, uh, and I'll tell you the story with that. Okay. The speed reducer can be put on any machine where the motor is down below. Okay. okay. So it'd be like this machine right here. Right exactly. Here's the speed reducer. Same machine. Motor's here. And here's your, your reducer. Okay. We have something to tie into. Okay. Okay. Now, if it's a direct drive, direct drive, you don't means have means the that. motor's built in the head. Ah, so, so you can't, yeah. you don't have that. All right, let me go look, look under sure. this one. If you look under this table, you see a little computer panel here to say it's a synchronizer built there, but underneath there's nothing because the motor is right here. Okay. So you cannot put a reducer onto that. There's nothing to hook it onto. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. So there's advantages both ways. One uh -huh. thing you got everything built into one. Uh -huh. The other one is no, you can't add on. Yeah. Okay. I just had this with somebody. I says <laughs> no, you have to go back to this with that and right. that, and we'll get you everything you want. Okay. Um, I'm not. I don't really understand this one. They're asking if the King Max zero three two zero can be programmed for a soft start. I don't know well, what they mean by that. They mean so it doesn't take off hard. Well, that's just pressure that's with all. your pedal. Like I, I have learned how hard to press my pedal to control my speed on that machine. So I think that's just learning so, your machine. Turn your dial down a little bit. Yeah. The other thing is change the angle of your pedal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can you, mess you with that. Make the pedal so it's not here. Make it up a little, uh -huh. just a tiny bit. Oh, so do that, that again way. with your hands because I didn't okay, catch so that. So you see your pedal's like this. So turn the angle up. 
And that way your toe hits it early. You know? All of that is adjustable. That's your adjustable. pedal, mm -hmm. your knee lift position. And I'll show you that. All of that under the table, you can adjust to Yeah, and what that's you your, like. what's comfortable for you. Mm, that's you know? cool. Uh-huh. I need uh -huh. to mess with mine. Um, someone's asking if there's a lifetime warranty available on any anything. No. No. See, these are industrial machines. These are figure everything we sell is going to go into a uh, factory making something, right? Yep. So they run them, and these things will run for, mm -hmm. you know, if you're probably at your home, you run them for a lifetime. Yeah. If you run them in a factory three shifts a day, maybe 25 yeah. years you're going to come talk to me, but I think <laughs> right. we need some. Right. So, I mean, ideally, they should last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, are you familiar with Artisan 797AB industrial yep. machine? They want to know... If you have a narrow foot that would fit that. Yeah, the 797 is your... Uh, okay. Exactly. So your... you could buy the same foot that I have for my machine, my correct. skinny foot, mm -hmm. and that would fit that artisan machine. That's correct. Okay. Um, 797 is the old brother. It's yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, pressure, adjusting the pressure foot. Uh, they want you to explain. I know what they're saying. Um, on my machine, this mm -hmm. uh, 0320, the pressure of the feet oh. and how to adjust those. So let's let's take you there. Go People ask me this all the time. We're going to have Jack explain it. <laughs> Field trip. <laughs> I'll wait till you come around with the camera. Yeah. Listen, I'm being very careful. I haven't side. tripped yeah. yet. Right. There you go. So go There's, over there and he's going to explain the different knobs. Right. You got this knob here, oh, which adjusts this foot, as I recall, this side, which would be your your uh, outside feet, and this one adjusts your pressure of your middle feet. And so you can adjust that by turning it down. There's a spring in there that pushes more pressure on, and there's a little lock nut here, so you lock it into place, you know, when you get it. And that'll adjust your pressure down. So if you have it where it's chewing up your fabric, yeah. one thing, like I said, and we have this with people, buy a second set of feet and grind them down a little bit, yeah. so that you do that. Mm -hmm. That's number Two, you set your pressure different on it. You can do it here and here. Okay. I messed with mine and it worked. I just kept turning. That's it all you got to do. And then <laughs> keep turning it. And then the other thing is, if you still want to adjust that walk, like I showed you with the knob over there. Yeah. You can do it on this machine too, and it's right here. Yeah. See I've the, messed with that before. See this little protractor yeah, thing? Yeah, we messed with okay, that. Okay, you undo. You with mine, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. you undo yeah. this yeah. right here. You slide this little thing up in the bracket and tighten it back down, walking. and you watch the feet start walking higher yeah. or walk yep. lower. Yep. yep. We did that when she set my all machine the way up. up. Perfect. Okay. That's um, good. Do Juki industrial feet fit the King Max? Yes. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me read more. Guys, so many questions here. Sorry. It's okay. Um, can they add the needle up down feature to the this, mm -hmm. this machine? Yes. We change the motor. To a different yes. motor and would be a positioning motor and that uh -huh. way it'll have a synchronizer coming out over here with uh -huh. the wire, and it'll make it always stop up or stop down yes mm -hmm. i didn't get that on susan's mm -hmm. uh i just didn't think it was needed mm -hmm. but that is an extra add-on correct and yeah and it could be added on to yours if you want it yeah right mm -hmm. right be a different um, motor i don't need it okay that kind of answered that do you know if your feet fit cell right no sale right is a constraint sale right is really a home machine that has industrial parts put in it, and it's more of a portable machine uh -huh. that is used for, like, we sold them to the Antarctic, to the McMurdo Station, uh -huh. they needed them down uh -huh. there. So I have a friend looking into getting the portable sale rights for a uh, retreat for bag making, because she's like, I need a good solution for this, yeah. so we're I've trying had them that. on boats, for people on boats, they yeah. do it. Oh, I've had yeah. like I say, the uh, Raytheon. I might be getting one. <laughs> for, <laughs> for, like, I think I'm we did it for the Antarctic, because they yeah. needed them down there, yeah. and then we sent them down to them. But they're kind of their own system. Yeah. And, and it's it's more of a, like a home foot is what it is. Okay. And they're saying there's a fabricator that's not the portable one. Oh, yeah. The Sailrite fabricator is like this. So okay. so with the he feet. Doesn't, he's okay. not familiar okay. with okay. that. Sailrite's their own. It's their, their own. own thing, they're right. their own thing, guys. Okay. Let's do um, more. I have sewn on that machine before at Aileen's house. Do you remember oh, that? That's what Aileen had. Oh, yeah. She had the Sailrite fabricator. That was a great machine. And it felt just like my King Max. Yeah. You know, it may be. They might be I, buying from like, King Max. Seriously, saying, yeah, I felt like I was mm -hmm. sewing on my King Max. They might be buying from them and saying, put our name on it. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty much equal to this, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> We kind of answered this. What would the, be the reason for skip stitches on industrial foot machines, needle size? 
Wrong. Um, dull needle. Uh huh. Okay, uh, dull needle. Yeah, your dull needle. It's gonna okay. hook instead of you know. Yeah. Um, it would be like you said, uh, needle size. Needle you, size. You get too small of a needle with uh -huh. eye with too big a thread. Okay. It's melting. Right. You know? So you want to make sure that there's a chart, and it'll uh -huh. tell you that you want a 50% opening in the eye. So that way you're not doing this. When you do that, you yep. create friction and you melt. And if your if your um, thread starts to do some shredding, that could be because your needle is too Correct. small as That's well. That's exactly right. Right. Mm -hmm. When people come to me saying your thread is shredding. Yeah, in my you, machine, I'm like, what needle size are you They using? got a size six, 16 and they got, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they thread 69 I don't, and 16. I don't but either. Okay. I don't, I'm like, Amazing. you need to up your needle size. So right. that's, you know, something to look for. Um, the answer, that answers my question. Okay. Uh, for the first time cylinder arm buyer, what would you recommend? What I'm getting. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the 1341. You buy one for life is what you're going to Yeah. Do. Like this is going to be my end all be all machine, basically. <laughs> Uh, is it better to get a cylinder arm with the extension table? I think so. Yeah, because then you need one machine. Uh-huh. Uh, what are the most important things to focus on when picking the right machine? Um, personally, Part, yeah. What, what, your, what are you going to be sewing? Yeah. Right? What is your... That's right. What are you going to be making, uh -huh. number one? Mm -hmm. Number two, what threads are you going to use? Yeah. Because i got to know. I had a guy come in here, and he, he had heard about this, that, and the other, and he wants to make like harnesses for horses and yeah he wouldn't i said what thread and he couldn't give me an answer and finally he gives me a diameter i go my god i gotta sell you a harness machine you know uh -huh. so, you know we're talking now to starting at 4500 and going up yeah and he's like whoa oh. I, get... <laughs> I says no 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 parts aren't even the same <laughs> So uh -uh, what do you uh -uh. use your thread? What are you going to make? Uh, you know, and, uh -huh. and the other thing is you want to make sure you get a machine that parts are available for. Yeah. You don't want to buy something that I got a great deal, but they haven't made parts for that machine since no. 1962, <laughs> no. right? That's, that's why I think buying from an actual right. mm -hmm. storefront like this right. is important. Correct. You have actual people that can mm -hmm. help you. Right. That's correct. <laughs> um, okay. Somebody says, I recently purchased this machine, my King Max 0320, and the oil is coming off on my fabric. Why is this happening? How do I fix it? I'm I, guessing she just overloaded it. it. That probably is what it is. But I would suggest you do this. You call back to the service department and talk to Ruben. Okay. Because there's one of two things. You have to know where the oil is coming from. Yeah. If it's coming from down in here, there's a little gasket. Mm -hmm. It could be. Uh, let's see, like it was going to yeah. be moisture. I was so, going to say, right when I oil mine, uh -huh. it tends to have a little bit of oil right. dripping in certain places or rubbing off. Sometimes so. that'll happen. There's a port uh -huh. gasket right here. The other thing, another rule of thumb you want to do is at night when you're not sewing, uh -huh. Take your, take a, put a piece of paper towel under the foot uh -huh. and take your needle and drive it into the paper towel and let it sit. Because uh -huh. that way, if there's a little bit of drip, it's absorbed <coughs> by the paper towel in there. So you don't get in the next morning and put your yeah. so silk charmeuse under and there and go, oh my oil. God. <laughs> paper towel, that's a great mm -hmm. trick. Mm -hmm. Okay, good tip. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, we already did that. And we already did that. <laughs> we were answering a lot I of had these a questions mm -hmm. along the way. Uh, what are this is a good question? What are common problems repair repairs? Mm -hmm. What are common problem repairs that can be avoided? Like, what are what's the most common problem that you see people have people that could be avoided? Don't, people don't hold the thread. Okay. And what they do is they thread lock it bad or they mm -hmm. smack the bobbin case like on here mm -hmm. and break it and then you need a new bobbin case, you know? Okay. Uh, so you're, Can you're... you buy extra bobbin cases? Yeah. I need to buy a couple of yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like cases. we're shopping. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, that's not a problem. That's <laughs> a common error that can uh -huh. happen, you know? Uh -huh. That is the most common. Okay, uh, somebody asked on here, is there a special foot for boot stitching? Well, we'll give you the, ch the thread chart, uh, the foot chart. Yeah. And you look and tell me which is the one that looks like the right one that you want to do. Because there's no rule of thumb, you know. Yeah. It's, it's some guy of... says, I did this and I ground a toe off a little bit and it works great. Okay. Or whatever, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Um, what is your best selling machine? I guess it depends on depends what, what people doing. are doing. Right, right. Okay. What's your best selling machine for people who are making back? Right now, right. you got it right there. It's the this one. And it's that, it's, you got <laughs> the it. two that I'm getting. That's exactly what they are. That's exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people go a step up from this and do the heavier one, which is the 1541. Yeah. And then again, that comes down to price and it comes down to the ability to have, do you want that needle feed walking foot? All right. The 1541 the can't do as thin materials as this right. one can, right. which is why I prefer this one. I can sew the entire, all my bag on one machine 
and I'm not going from machine to machine because it can handle all of my different layers. You actually of can material. go and change these feet on this machine to what's called a JP605 foot. It's a Teflon foot, yeah. and it makes it oh, into a Teflon foot for yeah, this? and it makes it into a heavy drop feed machine. So that way you want to sew your lining. Let's say you want your silk lining or your satin lining. You can sew it on there, sew like butter. I need that butter. too. I butter. think I need one too. Okay. I need that too. <laughs> okay. We're shopping people. I'll show you that. Um, <laughs> Kathleen and Katie both have questions okay, on there. Um, Katie says, I have three bobbin cases for my king mat. She bought it here. Mm -hmm. uh, one has the spring, two don't. Which way should it be? I would say at this point you call into the parts department. Well, she just a, called. Uh, I know she just talked to Ruben yesterday. Okay. I was talking to Katie because uh -huh. she was having tension issues. I think it's supposed to have a spring. I, I think okay. it, yeah, Katie, I think maybe the spring's broken off of one of them. Right. I think they're it's, supposed to have the spring. Right. Um, it's the leaf spring, the little, yeah. Uh-huh, And then yeah. if, if you have spin on, let's say you have it where the bobbin is spinning. Uh-huh. Beyond and you want it's glomming up the thread. Yeah. There's a thing called a star washer. And you can uh, mine put, spins. Okay, well, you can put a little... There's a trick. You can, you can <laughs> she said she called in, but she forgot to ask about the oh, bobbin. Okay, you put okay. the star washer in there, and it's a little piece of blue, like, metal, like blue steel. Uh -huh. And what it does, it causes a little tension on the bobbin, mm -hmm. so it doesn't allow it to spin on. Or B, the trick we do in the factory is we take a piece of paper towel and cut it the right size, uh -huh. put a drop of oil in it, stick it in there, and drag it just enough to it to cut that out. See, guys. <laughs> Mr. Jack knows everything. <laughs> People my, love when I come to talk to you. I'm in my 53rd <laughs> year and 20 of them were in, setting up factories all over yeah, the world. So it's yeah. like, well, how are we going to solve this today? He knows everything <laughs> about everything. Okay. Evelyn, I think the answer to your, to your question is, does your machine work for what you want to do? She's asking. She got a 1341 and wants to know if she should get a 03. 20. Um, I mean, guys. It just, <laughs> it's preference, right? I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. No, it's just what you prefer. Right. Um, if you're going to do stuff that you got to do cylinder and you got to work down to the floor level or work that way, mm -hmm. your uh, 1341 is the way to go. If you can do a lot of flatbed work and everything's fine with you, your 0302 is fine. Okay. Um, okay, someone said, how's the King Max 1341 compared to the Thor 1341? They're the same machine. Probably the same. They're know. the same machine, different name. Um, I consistently break my needle thread. What could I be doing wrong? I'm tension. on a Juki DU 11, 81 in tension, needle tension, size, needle, size. Mm -hmm. uh, needle position. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of different things it could be. Right. I would just kind of really pay close attention to when it breaks, what were you doing? Yeah, that's right. Were you trying <laughs> to climb up something, climb down something? Uh, were you using a size 16 needle with 69 nylon and wonder what happened? Mm -hmm. um, is your tension so tight that it's pulling up there and breaking the needle too as it goes up? Because the needle will start flexing. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, somebody asked, does he sell Thor parts and does he have an owner's manual I can buy for the Thor 1541? Um, you can probably get it online. Right. And if not, I'd say you call the parts department here. They may yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah. I know we don't sell Thor, so. Yeah. When I hit my elbow, it's Thor. That I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, does the 1341 have a safety switch like the 1541 no. S does? No. It no, does it does not. Um, There's a bigger version of it called the 0322, which goes to 14 inches. And that has one. Okay. I don't know if we have one out here. Really. That might be. There's a couple that just came up on the. Okay. Sorry. I'm like, I think we're good on this list. Okay. I think we've pretty much covered all of that. Um, my machine oil is turning yellow. Is that bad? Do I need to change it? No, not really. Not they, really. They start How are you? Clear is mind. it at once a year you should change the oil? Yeah, or? yeah you can do it. I think I've only changed mine once. It, it, <laughs> and I've had it for over four years. Look, when you want to change your oil is when it's got so much grit in there. Yeah, or, mine was getting Or it starts turning brown. Yeah. Or you've got... The tailors always have about 3,000 pins in the bottom of it. Uh -huh. or, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. or, or the laundries have a ton of lint in there. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the time to change the oil, okay. right? And, and if it starts getting it, change the oil. It's not a big deal. It, it really isn't that hard. Undo the screw, put the coffee can under, drain it, wipe it out clean, yeah. rear back in, it put fresh oil. Pretty easy. I have a video on it, actually. Um, I've got a when I changed my oil. Yeah, you on did. My, on my channel. Um, anything else? What's the difference between the 1541 and the 1541S? 1541S, the S stands for safety clutch. That's that button you push that knocks it back into timing. Timing. If it has a 1541 plane, it has no safety clutch. Mm. We do not bring in the 1541. 
We only bring in the 1541S for that one reason. Okay. So people say, well, I can get that cheaper. I says, okay, so call up and get a service call every time you're out of time. Tell me how cheap. Yes. <laughs> And then let's talk about it. So his opinion is you should buy the one with the S. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't waste your time with the Don't S. Don't waste your time. Um, take a machine apart and go down there and reset the... the um, um, Kathleen had a question up there. What was your question, Kathleen? Yeah, I just saw that pop up. Uh, what adjustments do I need to make on my industrial to sew lighter weight fabrics? Kathy, Kathleen, he just talked about there's a Teflon foot mm -hmm. that you can get for this machine. I'm not sure which machine you have, Kathleen. Um, and that will allow you to sew lighter fabric. If it's for this one, it's called a JP605. A JP605, and you sell that here, you sell it here. I'm sure. Just call in, it's a Teflon foot, and uh -huh. put, it'll take these two feet off, it'll only fit on the side here, you put it on, you're done. And you guys, they don't have a website, so if you wanna order feet and, you know, bobbin cases and uh, M size, uh, bobbins. bobbins, you can call, place your order over the phone, and they'll ship it to you, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Correct. Um, they also sell the new lights that I love. Oh, yeah, someone asked We're that. We're going to get... Exactly. I forgot yeah. about that. I'm gonna, I have this light for this machine, which is my new favorite light, and then I'm also going to get the blue light for the above mm -hmm. that I have for my King Max. I love their lights that they sell here. Um, I didn't even know Joe got that in. He was telling you were asking me that day, and I go, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got. I forgot to tell you. She, so Kathleen was saying yes about the foot, but she was wondering, do these knobs on the top help also if you're trying to do a thinner fabric? It can. They can set the tr uh, pressure different if you're having a problem. Okay. But what you want to do basically is get that correct foot on there, and then you can even adjust this adjustment in the back here. Yeah, that's where that comes So you're walking very light. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So instead of walking like this, you're gonna walk like this. Um, and also someone asked that extension table for the cylinder arm, mm -hmm. does it come in multiple sizes or is it one no, size? just one size. One size. Okay, so we must see the overhead and, light. Yep, this overhead light, this one here is awesome. This one's even bigger than the one on my current machine. Yes, it is. I That's think. way longer. Mm -hmm. Is that just magnetic? Just it's magnetic. I, yeah, it's magnetic. I so, did not know. Oh my gosh, I can't even get it off. It's so strong. So you can move it up here if yeah. you wanted to. You could move it while not here. Anywhere where there's metal, you can stick it. Right. Um, the one for my current machine is just a little bit shorter right here, but it works great. And then the one that hangs over, I don't see one in here. No, I didn't get that much. But it's, it attaches to the top of your thread holder here, and it's this nice big skinny light, and it's super bright and amazing. I love it. I, I have one. Uh, how much is that one, like 30 Something like that. It's around me. thirty to forty dollars, maybe cheaper. Um, totally worth it. That's what I have on mine. It's fabulous, right? Um, okay. Robert, that's funny. What? Definitely need those lights. Do we just ask Kasaya for the lighting package? <laughs> <laughs> for the no. Kasaya lighting package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask. Robert, if you call them and just say we want the Kasaya you lighting. Want the Kasaya lighting, lighting package. Right. They'll send you a black light and a blue light. Right. Done. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know what it is. Parts. Uh, okay, um, I think we've answered quite a few questions. I think we're good. I think so. We missed a few coming through on the phone. I was trying to keep up, but. Okay, sorry guys. We tried We tried our best. I feel <laughs> like we got a lot of good information out there. Um, I am going to pack my new machine up. We're going to take this little baby home. Um, I have no idea where I'm putting it. Do you want me to have anybody go through it with you before you leave? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we'll need some instructions. Sure. And yeah, I think that's it, everybody. Again, Jack, fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to call Ralph's. It's linked in here a couple times. I think Annette linked it. I will have it linked in the description below after the video. Um, hopefully, like anything that we talked about in this video that I can link, I will. And thank you. Guys. Everyone's saying thank you, Jack, for answering all you the are questions. Welcome. Isn't thank he you. awesome, guys? If you need, give me a call. Give me more answers. We should just do this every couple months. Yeah, <laughs> <it's fine. laughs> all right. Okay. We'll see you later. See Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Bye.